I don't think you're dead. I just. I think you better go to your next class. get really dry especially when I'm looking at a screen and I get caught up in what I'm looking at if I don't blink <laughs> just suddenly like uh. thought I would write I would write I would vlog for a minute just to talk about I don't know I tend to do this more when I have better energy instead of showing you sort of the, the downside this whole cancer crap it's Thursday afternoon. It feels really just uh, not that good. And uh, I have chemo tomorrow. It really sucks. <laughs> it sucks. The first round by this day, I was so in such a great mood because I felt mostly. After, after I'd done the first round of chemo, and it was the day before the second round, I felt mostly normal, and I was just so relieved, like, I thought that I would at least get a little taste of normal between each round, and it was just so encouraging to know that at least I could touch that base, you know, every couple weeks, but each time it slips a little further and further away and this time I'm just if I do any exercise in the day I just have nothing left and I swam this morning and not as much as I wanted to swim I ran out of time and I had to go to uh, my doctor's appointment to check up before you know my before chemo ch checkup <clears throat> and um I was told that my red blood count is down. It's low. So I'm a little bit anemic. And she said I'll probably get more and more anemic. And that's probably why I feel so tired. It's like a headachey sort of. It's just really depressing because I don't want to feel this way. And I came home, I went grocery shopping after the appointment, and I bought some food. It was something that I just felt like I really w looked good, but I knew it had garlic in it. <laughs> I thought, oh, maybe it'll be okay, because it's the end of the cycle. And if you haven't been watching my earlier vlogs, you don't know that somehow the way this chemo has affected my mouth is making, like, garlic taste like just really, like... It just feels like a chemical kind of burn on my tongue and roof of, and in my mouth. It doesn't taste like garlic. It just feels like I've eaten some kind of toxic burning chemical. It's not... I don't think it's acidic. A friend of mine was saying that garlic is acidic. I don't know if that's true. I know that because like sour things are acidic, like lemon. But I have no problem with lemon. So... In fact, when my mouth has tasted at its worst, I could suck on a lemon and it would taste like lemony and my mouth would taste more normal. Anyway, um, so I came home and put away the groceries, but every minute of putting away the groceries, I was just thinking, as soon as I finish this, I can lie down on the couch and just like watch a movie and just do nothing for the rest of the day. <laughs> I don't want to feel like this. I don't want to want to do, I don't want to want to do nothing. So I'm just letting this 
I'm letting it all hang out right now just because, you know, I'm showing you my up moments. But I don't want to paint an unrealistic picture of what it's like to go through this. I don't want to... I don't want anyone to watch my videos or read my blog and think what's wrong with me. Why don't I look as positive and cheerful and energetic as she does. <laughs> it's such a strange thing, you know, there's nothing like it. Being told that you're, you have cancer when you feel great and that you need to do these kind of treatments that are gonna make you feel like crap but if you don't that if you decide to err on what feels the side of what feels great you're you're risking your life and I know that her she had a very different kind of cancer but I think of Chris Chris Carr, I think her name is Chris, but her last name is Carr, who wrote um, Crazy Sexy Cancer and did the documentary about that. Now she has a diet book as well. And I, I know a little of her story, and, and I know that her doctor said her cancer was a type that grows really slowly, um, and that it, he thought it was reasonable to do kind of a watch and wait instead of doing any kind of chemo or anything like that. And so so she went ahead without any treatment. And um and then did alternative therapies like she basically like went to the vegan <laughs> wheatgrass colonic, you know, like these high enema kind of things wheatgrass every day and staying away from sweets and and I and watched her tumors get smaller and I occasionally just feel like I mean there's plenty of people who will tell me like that's the way I should be going but it's like you know I look for real good science around that like just you know, to make my decisions based on fact rather than on just sort of what I hope is true or what feels like it should be true. <laughs> People send me links and I look online and I get my hopes up and then I, f I look at these websites and then there are things that are said and they're just so vague and then there'll be a link to another website there and I'll look at this other website and it'll talk about things like taking, <laughs> this is true, I read on one website saying that the, what you should do to, if you have a cancer, is to take a shower and aim the hot water on the area where the tumor is and alternate hot and cold a certain number of minutes, seven times or something, you could shrink a tumor in half an hour. <laughs> I just think, come on. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to believe in this and you just throw me something like that and it's just like I can't have to dismiss the whole package. <sighs> I'm a little worried if I put this video up and a lot of people see it, people are going to be sending me a ton of <laughs> more links. Uh, it's not a bad thing. I'll look at the, I'll look over anything, but but when it comes right down to it, you know, I get it. The pharmaceutical industry has stands to make quite a bit of profit if they can find a cure. And there's not a, a lot of profit in turmeric and wheatgrass, you know. And so there isn't a lot of funding for research in those directions. So I, I get it that there's a skew in and the available information that may not reflect um, the reality of what would be the best approach. 
but I'm, I'm, I guess I'm of the mindset that I have to go with um, the most solid evidence, and it's from what I can tell, the most solid evidence is gathered by those well-funded studies. And so, I have to do this. I have to do this. Chemo. And I hate it, and I think it's not in my gut. I don't believe it's the best way to approach this. But it's the best thing that I have been able to figure out, and it's the best thing that a lot of people have been able to figure out. And I don't have a slow-growing cancer where it's safe to wait and watch. And so I'm on this track right now that's all about eradicating the cancer that's in me. It doesn't do a damn thing towards addressing how the cancer got there in the first place. And it's not like a virus or some kind of bacterial infection where once you kill the bacteria which came from some source outside of my body, it it's, you know, I'm safe, I'm pretty safe that it's not going to re-emerge re in my system. Cancer isn't like that, though there might be carcinogens in the environment or factors in my lifestyle that create the conditions where cancer can spread. The cancer doesn't come from outside of me. It's a mutation of my own cells. And I am not addressing with, with chemotherapy or radiation. I'm not addressing the source of that mutation. I know that. And certainly with radiation, I'm introducing a, a factor that can that is cited in other cancers. We all know that radiation causes cancer. I'm told that I'm getting such a small amount of it over the course of my lifetime that, that the benefits outweigh the risks. risks. But I anyway. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Right now it's just chemo that I'm up against and uh, just needed to show you another slice of the reality <laughs> of what this is like. It's a beautiful Thursday afternoon. I would love to be up at my desk. There's lots of projects that I'd love to be working on. It just feels a little overwhelming because of the way I feel physically right now. And I really hate that I have to do more of this tomorrow. Last night we gave Millie a trim. It's really messy. I kind of ran out of time. I didn't have time to do a neat job, but <clears throat> I didn't want to shear her entirely, which is really the easiest way to go to make it even. But you know, it's just that way with the with the um, clippers. She just wouldn't have enough fur left over to uh, keep her warm. So I'm gonna um, edit together some video from from that so I can show you the process, but. I have to install some software because the editing process I've been using thus far is very tedious. Um, so I've got some some things I need to do to, before I can ma manage that. Um, okay, that's it for now. Bye. Sweet pea. Mm.